Flying polar routes is relatively commonplace today, connecting Asian and European cities to North America. But the very first airline to ever fly this way was Scandinavian Airline Systems, or SAS, who established this means of reducing distances thanks to some interesting engineering. In August 1946, SAS launched its first long-haul route using Douglas DC Falls between Stockholm and New York via Copenhagen, Prestwick and Gander, with a flight time of 25 hours. SAS knew that a polar route could shave hours off flight times and decided that this shortcut was the future of flying. However, getting it done would not be so easy. In the 1950s, navigating an aircraft was not as easy as it is now with modern technology. Navigating under the sun, stars and moon to determine the aircraft's position, known as astro-navigation. However, over the poles, this was tricky. The sextant was inadequate for long periods of each year as the sun is below the horizon for many months at a time. Traditional maps also lacked sufficient detail to be any help. When problems like this existed, airlines frequently relied on magnetic compass navigation. However, this too would fail on a polar route, as compasses would point to the south when they should have been pointing north, or would swing back and forth uselessly. Thus, SAS worked with Bendix Aviation Corporation and a team led by Norwegian World War II veteran A. Nasver Pedersen to develop a solution. Three different key technologies were developed that would change long-haul aviation forever. The first was the high-precision gyro compass, which remained pointing in the same direction for the entirety of the flight. The next was the Greenwich Grid system, which provided a means for the airline to chart the region by laying down a grid over the polar region using the Greenwich Meridian as the starting point. The third and possibly most groundbreaking development was the solar compass, which used polarized light to see the location of the sun even if it was below the horizon. This was also known as the Fund Sky Compass. On November 19, 1952, the very first flight took place using the new DC-6B, a special extended range version of the Douglas aircraft. 22 dignitaries were on board, as well as Peterson himself, who was the navigator on the trip. From Los Angeles, the flight stopped in Edmonton, Canada and Tool, Greenland, before landing in Copenhagen, a 28-hour journey. Between 1952 and 1954, additional flights were flown to test the new technology. The three routes used were Scandinavia to Los Angeles via Greenland, Scandinavia to Japan via Greenland and Alaska, and Scandinavia to Japan across the Arctic Ocean to Alaska. The airline was ready to take off with passengers by 1954. On November 15, 1954, the SAS DC-6B, named Helg Viking, was kitted out with Arctic survival gear, just in case, and set off from Copenhagen for Los Angeles. On the route, it would stop in Sondra Stomford and Winnipeg. On the same day, taking off from Los Angeles was another DC-6B named Leaf Viking, headed in the opposite direction. The two planes met each other at the North Pole to celebrate their accomplishment. By September 1955, more than 180 flights had been carried out over that route without any problems, according to Peterson. The success of the route proved that the Great Circle was indeed better, and many other airlines soon followed on. Canadian Pacific began Vancouver to Amsterdam flights in 1955. Pan Am and TWA began West Coast USA flights to Paris and London in 1957. In an adorable twist, Peterson's wife Ingrid Elizabeth Liljegren was the first woman to fly over the North Pole in 1963, with Peterson as navigator. Today, the majority of long-haul airlines fly over the North Pole when traversing east or west. Many are larger and more prolific than SAS, but it pays to remember that it was this unassuming Scandinavian airline that first made this efficient long-haul flying a success. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.